Hello everybody, how's it going today? Go Plasma 231 here, back in day, talk about Oshinoko, chapter number 154. This chapter is titled, 15 Year Lie. And I'm honestly a little bit surprised that we haven't gotten a chapter titled this yet, um, 15 Year Lie, but as we will get through the context of what the 15 Year Lie is actually in this chapter, because in this chapter, I mean, I'm gonna say this is probably the pin ultimate climax chapter of Oshinoko. Um, and what I mean by that is that this chapter has a lot of moving parts that sort of get wrapped up and tied together here in this one single chapter to culminate in a lot of the story of Oshinoko itself. We find out a lot of different things about Ai, Hikaru, um, and also things also, of course, relating to the other two main characters, Aqua and Ruby. So there's a lot that goes on in this chapter. And we learned that the 15-year line, besides her being the name of this movie, of course, it's about Ai's life and her eventual death. We learned that this movie is about so much more. But we will get all into that as we get further into this chapter. But this chapter, maybe, probably it will go down as the best Oshinoko chapter ever for the core reason of we learn everything here. We learn what it means for I and what it, everything means for Karu. We, we learn so stupidly much here, but we will get into all of that as this chapter goes on. Um, and we'll also just talk about a whole bunch of other Oshinoko stuff because that's what we do around here. But um, yeah, so we're, we're going to start off the chapter, of course, with what happened last time. And of course, last time, we had the whole thing where, oh, look at that. Um, there was an interview and, or that was two chapters ago, there was an interview. And we learned that the interviewer was, of course, Hikaru. And um, Hikaru was interviewing Aqua. And then last chapter was all about a discussion between um, Aqua and Hikaru. And what they sort of were thinking about the various moving pieces of this movie. And really the big culmination of it was that Hikaru was calling this movie a work of fiction because... Um, the love that I and him shared was really one-sided to him, which we will find out is a lie like most things in this series in this chapter, but we will get in there whenever we get there. Um, and then the last chapter ended with a flashback. The last half of last chapter was a flashback where it culminated in um, Hakaru's world pretty much cracking to pieces whenever I clearly tells him like, hey, um, we should not see each other anymore, right? And we pretty much start off this chapter in that same exact flashback that we had last chapter, pretty much the second after I had just told Hikaru, we should not see each other anymore. As we see Hikaru's direct reaction to hearing this from I, and he's like, um, it, it's, it's better if we don't see each other anymore? Like, why, why is that so? Like, like, what do you mean? And we see that I is simply just looking at him, and we see that she goes and, like, fiddles with her hair a little bit. But she just says, well, I'm pregnant. And Hikaru has a great reaction face here. Just like, huh? Like, what? And um, he's like, but I made sure. And I don't know what he was going to continue on this sentence with. But um, I just cuts him off and just says, hey, it happens. Um, did you pay attention during health and physical education? And um, Hikaru, we don't get a direct answer from him. But... Um, we pretty much see that Hikaru just pauses and he's sort of just panicking at this point because not only did he got told um, by I that um, we shouldn't see each other anymore, but he also got told by her that yes, um, you have another child now, which will eventually turn out to be two children, but whatever it is, but yeah, of course, um, I was about to say, I does not know about the whole Taiki situation, but we'll get into that here in literally like um one two three four five six panels so we'll get there um but Hikaru in his panic stage is like oh I, I see and he's like okay then let's just go get married and I is just like we cannot do that but Hikaru's like yeah we'll get married and we'll live together and all this and I's just like no come on dude we can't do that Hikaru and she says like hey I mean you're really handsome and it would be perfectly fine if we were just to date each other like other young people would. But being with you forever, and she just says, like, I guess it'd just be too much for me. And eventually, she drops the bombshell saying, I know Taiki Kun is your son with Ari, correct? And um, as she says this, um, she's like, I can't even, I mean, that's just really tough. She's like, I can't even bear to think about that, right? 
and she also just says like hey and also about the baby I, I guess it's difficult for me too and we eventually see that she gets some other things together in the room why she's been saying this and she packs a little bag and slings it over her shoulder opens up the door and as she starts to walk out the door she just says it's over I can't love you as she exits out of the room and we just see Hikaru's spawn. And we always see the back of his head, but we can tell, of course, Hikaru's emotions here. And that he is not in a good place at all. As we cut back to the present, where, of course, Aqua is sitting here talking with Hikaru. And, um, of course, Hikaru just recounted this um, event through what he knew about it, of course. Since that sort of... It wasn't like a movie filming, but it was Hikaru's thoughts and views on the perspective, right? And in the present, Hikaru's just like, I know... It was only natural. She knew what I had ended up doing, so she chose to leave me. And he then says, like, hey, I was the one who gave her address to Ryosuke-kun, who was the guy who ended up stabbing and killing Ai, which I'm a little confused here by what Akaru means here, because um, I take it that this scene with where I left Akaru was probably pretty close after she found out she got pregnant, if not, like, one of the few days after, so... Unless in the Oshinoko universe, I mean, we know birthing can be a little bit of a weird thing because, of course, our reincarnation and all of that. Because, um, of course, we know Aqua and Ruby, of course, Serena and Goro. But we know that's also due to Suko Yomi, um, Kroger, and all of that sort of stuff. So, it's a little confusing there. But let's just give, like, the benefit of doubt. Say this was, like, okay, this was seven, um, this was two months after I figured out she'd been pregnant or whatever. So, seven months, right? And then from there, we know that whenever um, Aqua and Ruby, or whenever I was stabbed, Aqua and Ruby were like, what, four or something? I mean, they weren't terribly young. Maybe the Oshinoko wiki will say it. How old? I should probably notice. I think they were like four or something. How old was uh, Ruby when I died? It's great thing Google's got it for me. Um, what do they say? Um... Yeah, she, they should have been about around three to four whenever I died. She gave birth at 16 and died near her 20th birthday. So, yes, um, they were about three to four years old. So, not very old whatsoever. So, that's still, like, if we give it again to Benefit out saying that she was, like, really close, like, the children had just turned three and um, how everything worked out, it would have still been about three and a half years to four years whenever um Hikaru gave the address to Kyosuke which is a little bit of an interesting thing and also there's I'm not trying to like really nitpick this because this is just a great chapter as we'll get into but the other idea of just like okay so Hikaru held that for a while because of course we also knew that I in the past had thought about um having the children's father come over to see them but of course we know that she got stabbed for any of that could have happened and things like that if I'm remembering everything correctly maybe I probably need to rewatch the anime to get a refresher if not just reread the series again but either way um Hikaru just says like hey I was the one who gave Ryosuke the address um to stab I which is something I think we had all put together by this point but that's it what it is um and then Hikaru just continues on after I said all of that. Um, he says, like, hey, um, I did not mean to dodge that responsibility at all, but I never thought he would actually kill her. As he just says that I just wanted to scare her a little so sh she would understand my deep, dark despair. And Hikaru just continues saying, like, that deep, dark despair I felt when the girl I loved so much that I was willing to sacrifice my own life for told me she couldn't love me. As we see a little bit of sort of like a flashback panel of Hikaru in a bar after, I, I take it to be a bar, um, in somewhere after, of course, he learned that I got stabbed, which would make sense because if he was also 16 or so around if I, he'd be probably, I, I don't know what the drinking age in Japan is, but he would probably be old enough to drink, so that's why he'd be at a bar, like, all despondent that I was actually killed by his own actions, right? Um, and as Hikaru is saying all of this, um, he's pretty much just walking up, and he's leaning on the door of this office, because, of course, Aqua stopped him, um, two chapter, last chapter, whenever he was getting ready to walk out, right? But at this point, after, um, Hikaru goes through all of this and admit to all of this, he says, do you actually believe her words? And Hikaru's like, well, yeah, of course I do. And he says, everything I said was normal. And he's just like, hey, 
we were just forcing all of our selfish fantasies on I, when in reality, she was just a normal human being living a normal life. She distanced herself from terrifying things. She had both cruel and shelf and selfish, I almost said shellfish sides. No, cruel and selfish sides. She was just an ordinary girl you can find anywhere. And we sort of can tell that Akari's tone gets a bit deeper in his voice when he says like, I didn't love me. She was just like everyone else, which oh, is such a hard way to take that line of saying that yes, I was ordinary. She, We may have made her out to be something that she was, but she also wasn't. She was just a regular person. And regular people don't like me. That is such a harsh thing. That's one of the harsh things that Alcar could even think in this second, but that's what he believes is true here, right? And at that point, um, Aqua is still looking at Hakaru, and we see he's got a very interesting expression that honestly, I don't quite know what Aqua's expression here is, but as he's looking at Hakaru, he eventually tilts his head to the floor as he says, well, in that case, why were we born? Of course, referring to himself and Ruby. As he said, why did I give birth to us? Have you ever thought about the meaning behind it? As we see in his hand, he is holding up the DVD, of course. Um, that is, we see it, this DVD is the 15-year um, live first screening DVD, along with um, the two Aqua 15 years old DVD, right? As we pretty much see that he's like, hey, this first screening of the movie is actually incomplete. As he says, we are actually currently discussing whether or not to include this footage in the credits or not. As we see that Aqua also has a remote in his hand and he presses the play button on this remote as the projector that has been in this room this entire time. I don't know if we've actually seen the projector like in shots or anything, but there is a projector in this room, all of the lights dim. As the projector plays what is on Aqua's DVD here finally. As it just says, Aqua, um, I'm sure you're wondering why we broke up, right? Well, he was already at his limit. And as Hikari starts to hear Ai's voice, and of course what's on this DVD, he looks forward and then just turns around to look at the screen. As um, Ai's message to Aqua continues, she says, he was afflicted by the dark side of the entertainment industry and became dependent on me. It felt like he was being crushed by the very weight of life. He was on the verge of breaking. In the midst of all of this, he found out that I was pregnant. I thought he could, he definitely can't take any more of this. So that's why I said it. I said, I can't be burdened with you, so let's break up. I can't love you. As she recalls the words that, of course, she said to Hikaru that fateful day. As she just continues saying, like, I thought he would be okay once we were gone. I don't really understand what it means to love someone. And if you ask me, this isn't love. I didn't necessarily think it was either, so I, I do get really anxious, as I sort of opens up this little bit of a side of herself, but eventually she says, but I decide to believe that lies are love, and she says, at first I was very scared to give birth because I knew that I would become a burden on him, but I couldn't do that. The truth is, I really wanted to be with him forever, as we finally get another shot of Hikaru in this scene. And of course, this entire time, Hikaru has had the dark starring gons. But in this moment, everything just fades from his vision as he just looks blindly at the television screen or the projector screen. Sue me, I'm sorry. As he looks at the screen where this is being broadcast. Ai's message continues saying, I wanted to carry, um, I wanted to carry the burden he carried and raise our children together. I wanted to live my future with him after all. He is the first person I've ever wanted to love. Even though I don't really understand love. And we eventually see that um, this is a point where it switches to what she's actually saying to Aqua. As here in the DVD she says, Hey Aqua, from your perspective as a 15 year old, do you think my words back then were really lies? I can't love you. It was a lie, wasn't it? So this is my request to both of you as adults. If he is still lost now, I want you to help him together with me. As we see that the screen sort of fades out here, um, as well, it doesn't quite fade out here, but we don't get any more of the narration that I said. As Aqua just starts saying to Akari, he says, 
Ruby acted out the words, I can't love you, as a lie. You said, she honored I's request properly. Aqua then says, the 15-year lie, this entire movie, is a timeless love letter from I to you, whom she pushed away back then, as well as our revenge on you for not understanding her. And in these final shots of the chapter, and we see the screening of the actual movie going on in the theater, we see Aqua's face as he's looking on at Akaru. We see Akaru, who is looking at the screen, of course. Um, there's a double page spread here whenever Aqua says, this movie is a timeless love letter from I to you. We see that um, um, I sort of got her hand up on the sort of screen, like reaching out towards the camcorder where she's recording this on for Aqua. And we see that Hikaru is leaning up on the screen, hearing all of this. He's got his hand up to the thing. And we see that Ruby is sitting outside this door, listening to all of this. And we see Aqua just crying with his um, light starring on, shining bright, as he's looking at Hikaru. And also crying. We can't forget he's crying. But that is where we end off this chapter of Oshinoko. And, oh, the first time I read this chapter, it was such an experience. Like, getting to read it for the first time and learning so much about all of these characters in Oshinoko. I think the most interesting part of this is the actual end of it where Aqua says, of course, this entire series we've known that Aqua has been on a revenge plot to get back at Hikaru. Um, of course, this all started when he was really young and he didn't necessarily know anything, but whenever he turned 15, he got this DVD. And the DVD here, of course, gave eyes true and actual wishes for the future. And we see that, yeah, this came to fruition. And from that point, Aqua's revenge wasn't necessarily to kill Hikaru. It was the revenge, as Aqua puts it, for not understanding I. As we also learned, like, yeah, I wanted to be Hikaru. She also loved Hikaru. As I, I do find, like, still, the whole idea of, like, oh, um, Ruby acted out the words, I can't love you, as a lie. <laughs> sure, it's whatever. I understand the Ocean of Coast things is, like, yeah, um, idols are built on lies and all of that, and I can't love you lie and whatever, but... I do think it is a little stupid. It works into the narrative sense of the story, but I don't think this is how life actually works. <laughs> so, it is a little funny there, but either way, this was an amazing chapter going through in that final two-page spread where you can feel the emotion as Aqua says this to Hikaru of sort of revealing the entire crux of the series of I wasn't blindly killed. She loved Hikaru. Hikaru loved her, and Hikaru... Um, I want to save Hikaru, and Hikaru took all of this the wrong way. It is just purely, greatly amazing. Um, of course, at the end of this chapter, we see Ruby standing outside of the door, um, obviously hearing all of this going on, so I will be interested to see what will happen next time, um, as I'm sure that Ruby will be coming into the room to sort of talk a little bit of stuff to Hikaru and both of the brothers, or not, I'm not saying both the brothers, no, it's a brother and sister, um, giving sort of a car maybe a piece of their mind. But the other thing I sort of want to talk about here is this series has to be almost over. I mean, there are very few things left to wrap up. Of course, what is going to happen to Hikaru? What's the reception of this movie going to be? And all of these other things coming together. Um, of course, we probably have the final B. Konohachi performance. Um, Kana and Ruby sort of, um, or Kana and Aqua sort of coming together. And a few of these other things, these loose plot points, of course, what's going to happen with Akane. Um, and all of these other different things. But we cannot have too much longer of this series left, I don't think, because... There is not really too much of a story left to tell. This is the crux of Oshinoko, is this chapter right here. And I remember a few um, chapters ago, I or a few reviews ago, I talked about my theory for when Oshinoko may end. And I honestly think that we have six chapters of Oshinoko left after this one. Of course, why do I think this? Um, number one... Of course, manga in Japan is sold in volumes. 
So, um, we actually, at the time I'm recording this, I am recording this a little bit late, if you couldn't guess, um, chapter 155 actually comes out tomorrow, it's a recording of this video, so by the time you watch this, chapter number 155 is probably already out, but all of the Oshinoko volumes have, um, 10 chapters per volume, and we also just got the release of chapter, or of volume number 15, at the release of this, you will actually be seeing it on screen probably right now, as it's been on the screen the entire video, and it has um, Ruby and Kana on it, but that is going to hold all of the chapters from, I think, 140 to 149, or no, 141 to 150, which means that we probably have from, um, 155, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So six chapters left for Oshinoko to have one final volume to sort of wrap up the rest of these plot lines here. Because if not, only other thing I could possibly see them doing is we have 16 chapters left, which I would be happy about because I do like Oshinoko. But also, I don't think this series needs to be overstaying its welcome at this point with how much we have um, sort of left to cover as I don't think that at this point Ak Akasaka is going to go through and Mingo Yorkie, of course. These are going to decide, okay, um, we're going to write um, seven more chapters, and the last volume will just have 11 chapters in it. At that point, I know that these, this is a great artist-writer duo. They can probably figure out how to trim it down into six chapters, maybe if a longer final chapter. There is a lot going on there, so I'm not really sure. I'd be interested to hear what you guys not only think about this chapter, because, I mean, I know what you should think about this chapter, that it was simply amazing, but also to know what you guys think about the whole idea of how many chapters Oshinoko has left, because it cannot be many. I mean, there are not that many. Um, of course, the anime is also debuting right now. I think episode 14 or episode 3 of season 2 comes out tomorrow. Um, and I don't think... There's a chance that we may hear at the very end of the animated, okay, here's the announcement that Oshinoko has blank chapters left, but who really knows? Um, yeah, either way, this was an amazing chapter, um, and yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching. Um, like I said earlier, um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this Oshinoko chapter, how good it was, and also just a few theories of how long series is left, and if you did enjoy this chapter review, um, I've done plenty of others on the channel. I don't know if we've had any other chapters this good. I mean, we've had some pretty good chapters. I mean, I particularly liked the chapter here not too long ago about Pro Girl and um, why she reincarnated into twins. Um, but either way, um, I've done a bunch of chapter reviews, um, a bunch of good chapters, if I have to say so. I mean, maybe you want to go check out the chapter review where um, Aqua and Ruby learned who each other were in the past. That was a pretty good chapter. Um, and yeah, so... Thank you guys for watching. Go check out some of those if you want to. And either way, I will see you guys next time for chapter number 155 of Ocean Co. Again, this was chapter number 154 titled 15 Year Lie. Um, I forgot to mention, yes, there is that star logo here. And yeah, um, thank you guys very much for watching. Yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. This will be Gold Plasma 231 signing out.